1983. Philips introduced the biggest single step forward in the history of audio, compact disc. The ultimate in sound reproduction. Now, Philips takes the next logical step. CD video, the ultimate in sound and vision. CD video, an evolutionary new playback system combining the perfection of digital audio and high quality video. The greatest home entertainment experience. And this is what it takes. The CD video player, on top of an amplifier, speakers, and a television set. That's all. One player on which all optical discs, CD and CD video can be played. Let's introduce them. The 3 inch CD single, the well known 5 inch CD album, the new golden 5 inch CD video single, the 8 inch CD video extended play, the 12 inch CD video long play. All can be played in the same unit. All for one, one for all. The 3 inch CD single offers 20 minutes of perfect sound. The popular 5-inch CD album gives up to 74 minutes of perfect sound. But now you can see the music. The 5-inch CD video single has a full 6 minutes of video with CD sound, plus an additional 20 minutes of digital sound only. The audio part, by the way, can be played on any CD player. The CD video single is particularly suitable for video clips. The 8-inch CD Video EP Extended Play offers 20 to 40 minutes of CD sound and video, making the CD Video EP the perfect vehicle for collections of video clips, cartoons, pop concerts. The largest disc of the new CD Video family is the 12-inch CD Video LP Long Play. No less than 60 to 120 minutes top of the bill sound and vision, opening the way to operas and classical concerts, pop concerts, feature films and other programs. The ultimate in sound and vision brought together in one system, offering a new world of choice. All played on one player, the Philips CD Video Player. The Philips CDV475 brings the ultimate in digital sound reproduction, plus truly superb pictures. This sophisticated player accepts all optical discs, whether CD or CD video. Philips, of course, as the inventor of the compact disc, has built up a solid reputation with their CD players. And this new one is no exception. It offers 16-bit 4x oversampling, a double digital analog converter and digital output. All that guarantees superb sound, coupled with complete ease of use. Switch it on, open the drawer, insert the audio compact disc, close the drawer and that's all. The disc will start playing from the beginning. Everything else I want to do now is done from the comfort of my armchair, thanks to the truly advanced remote control. I can go back to the beginning of the track by pressing the play button again. 
I can also move to the next track or go back to the previous track. You'll notice that the display on the player indicates everything you do. Right, now let's suppose you only want to play track 6. First, press the track button. Then, number 6. And then, play. That's all, right from the comfort of your armchair. In order to move to a particular time in the track you are listening to, you first push the time button. Then punch in the starting time you want. Sometimes you may not know exactly where your chosen excerpt starts. For that, Philips has incorporated a scan function. This allows you to move forwards and backwards until you find the passage you want. Obviously, the Philips CD video player allows you to program your own favorite selection from a CD. Press the program key, then your first number, then memo. By the same procedure, you can program up to 20 choices. Then simply press play and your selection will be played. You can also program the player to repeat your program time and again. Simply press repeat. It is also possible to repeat only a certain section of a title, a chorus perhaps or a particular theme, by pressing the AB button to mark the start of the section and by pressing it again at the end of the section. Now you can repeat that section as often as you like. And if, while you're enjoying the superb sound of your Philips CDV 475, you want to get some coffee or top up your drink, then simply press pause. And use either pause or play to continue. Ease of operation. That's what Philips equipment is all about. But this is CD video so your television screen can be used as display. Watch. You can also use the display button to show the status of the disc being played on the television screen. OK, let's change to another disc. Now you see that the indication tells you that you have inserted a CD video single. A CD video single contains a video clip with digital sound, lasting up to six minutes, and the player starts automatically from that track. As an extra, you find 20 minutes of CD music only on the rest of the disc. You can move from one section to the other, program it and use all the possibilities we've discussed for CD operation. You will have noticed that the drawer has three rings. CDs and CD video singles fit into the innermost ring. The other two are for CD video EP and LP discs. The RGB output ensures high-quality video pictures combined with true CD sound. Most of the functions available for CD replay can be used when playing a CD video disc. The various sections are called chapters. You can move to any chapter. Repeat any chapter. Scan forwards and backwards. Mark a specific section for repetition. And everything is done in the same way as for CD operation. There are three groups of keys on the remote control we have not yet discussed. These are only for operating so-called CD video active discs. The sleeve indicates whether a disc is active or not. With an active disc you can freeze a frame. Move forwards and backwards between frames.
and slow down or speed up the motion. So that's the Philips CDV475 and all there is left to do now is to enjoy the superb CD sound and the best pictures available today. With the ease of use you have a right to expect from Philips. Now that you know what you can do with your CD video and how to operate it, we'll have a quick look at how it works. It is, again, amazingly simple. That is, when you don't have to look inside the machine, which you probably won't, as they don't usually fail. Anyway, we won't go into all the nuts and bolts and circuitry, but stick to the main principles. Remember that bit about digitizing information? It's the way sound is put onto a CD. On a gramophone record, the sound is written in analog form. So by going digital, you save a lot of space as well as gaining in sound quality. It goes like this. From analog equipment, like a record player or a microphone, you get your information in this way. It's an endless succession of peaks and troughs, very much like waves. Now watch what happens when we start to digitize. We cut the wave into pieces by putting a grid over it. Left to right indicates time, top to bottom represents the intensity of the signal. Let's see, at time zero the intensity is one, at time one it is two, at time two it is six. At time 3, it is 7, and so on, till the whole wave has been measured. Now we've got a row of numbers, but we have to feed this row of numbers to the computer inside the CD player, and computers are very stupid. They're nothing more than a bunch of switches. They only understand on and off. In other words, one and zero. So we have to convert the numbers into ones and zeros using a code agreed upon by computer buffs. One becomes off, off, on, zero, zero, one. Two becomes zero, one, zero. For six, one, one, zero. Seven becomes one, 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 and so on. But since the computer wants an electrical signal, here come the switches again. Off, off, on. Off, on, off. On, on, off. To you and me, it doesn't make much sense. But it is something you can put on a compact disc. For on, you leave it as it is. And for off, you make a small indentation, which we call a pit. If you look at your CD through a microscope, you can actually see them. Tiny dots and dashes representing ons and offs, or clusters of them, flashing past at a rate of about half a million per second. But right at this moment, you're watching a picture coming from a compact disc. So there must be a way to store a television image in much the same manner. Well, there is, but there is also a slight difference. Anyway, let's look at that television picture. As you know, inside your TV set, there is an electron beam which creates the picture by making the screen light up as it builds the image line by line. In this part of the picture, which is bright, the beam needs a lot of energy. But here, the screen is dark. Less energy has to be pumped in. Bright again, energy up dark, it comes down. Once more, up, down, up, down, up. See the energy level indicator? It looks a lot like the pattern we saw a moment ago when we were dealing with sound. And that is nice because in the end we want to get to those pits in the disc again. 
But there is a difference. In this case, we don't get a simple on-off signal. A TV picture isn't just bright and dark, it is also the shades in between and color too. So we have to record much more information on the video part of the disc than is needed for audio only. It looks like this. A lot of small pits for a bright part of the screen, fewer but bigger ones for a dark part. And everything in between, containing information for brightness and using an extra trick, color as well. But didn't we miss something? What about digitizing? Yes, you're right, it is not digitized. Video discs use an analog signal like the old-time gramophone record, but much, much better. There are seven million pits for each second of video on this disc. That's why you have to play a CD video disc much faster 10 times as fast as a CD audio disc. Eh? Audio? What about sound? You can hear that clear, superior CD sound now, so it must be somewhere on the disc. Well, now comes the clever bit. Because the disc spins so fast, there is some room to play around with the length of the pits without doing harm to the video content. Remember what CD digital audio looks like through a microscope? That's right, pits of varying lengths. Now, if you were to lengthen the pits a bit here, and trim a little off the sides there, you finish with something which still contains the original video information, but from a distance looks remarkably like digital audio. The dashes are ten times longer, but they should be, as the disc now spins ten times as fast. But how on earth do you get sound and video back from that lot? To find out, we have to make a journey into the heart of the CD video machine. Inside is a laser. A laser is capable of creating an intensive beam of light which is then focused exactly on the pits in the disc. Now, remember that the disc is shiny, so the beam will reflect back. As the disc spins round, the beam will either hit the pits or just the flat shiny surface. And from a pit, the reflection is quite a bit weaker. That difference is picked up by photodetectors underneath. They convert the light into an electrical signal, on and off again. But the problem is that we now have a stream of 7 million pulses a second, and we need to create sound and vision from that. Now, this is difficult, so watch closely. We want audio and video. So, we need to split the signal two ways, for two different operations. Audio first. We feed all the ons and offs into an electronic unit which looks at their average value. Where the pits have been shortened, it will read a high average. Where there is a lot of spacing, it will read a low average. Never mind how many pits there are, it's their average value that counts. What happens next is that the unit puts out a new on signal for a high average and an off signal for a low one. What it in fact does is read the video track on the disc as if it were an audio CD by only looking at the dots and dashes that we have so cleverly created by varying the length of the pits. Neat, isn't it? Of course, your CD video machine has been designed for use as a compact disc player as well. So, the audio electronics will immediately create that well-known digital stereo sound. But, 
we haven't got a picture yet, have we? Well, the other half of the split-up signal is fed into another unit. This one does not care about averages. It just counts those seven million pulses per second as they pass, one for each pit. And if you remember how we put the video on the disc in the first place, it is not hard to understand what happens next. A lot of pits represents a high energy level in the electron beam. The fewer pits there are, the more the energy level goes down. So by calculating how many pits there are for any given point on the screen, you will get your picture back, colour and all. CD video is the first real breakthrough in TV home entertainment since the invention of the VCR video cassette by Philips 20 years ago. But unlike videotapes, CD video discs do not wear in use. Only a harmless beam of light will touch them when played. They don't lose what's on them in 50 years, as do videotapes. They don't break. They don't hiss or crackle. They are made to last. They're here to stay.